What comes up for me as the strongest memories of being at the children's school was discovering myself as an individual and seeing everyone else embrace who they were as individuals too. I had a baby doll, Malusi. That was my most important thing. They let me bring my baby doll to school and just carry her around. And we even had a birthday party for her in like first grade. Well, I've always been interested in history. But Athenians are the smartest and just as good as Spartans. Back in third grade, I got a copy of Call of Duty 3 on the Xbox and it's like a game set in World War II. And luckily I was at the children's school, so when I came into my third grade classroom and I wanted to learn about World War II that day, I had the opportunity to pursue that. My hobbies and my interests would change practically every week or two. And I think, at the children's school at least, that was something that wasn't suppressed. I think that the teachers really worked hard to to get kids really engaged. The teachers took us seriously enough to value our ideas like that. Iris, it's about what? This one's about pencils. A lot of people have been fighting over the gold, silver, and bronze pencils. Like there was a reason that I frequently called them mom by accident. Like they they genuinely felt like like parents to me. Instead of taking a seat of intellectual superiority over me, they like masqueraded as struggling to say, solve the same problem. You investigate something you're curious about, and you learn something by doing that. I don't think I was super impressed with it back then, I just thought that was normal. You say that right now? Yay! We would do projects. I remember learning all about the respiratory system. And I remember, I specifically remember learning the word respiratory in that project and thinking it was such a cool big word. In second grade we made like a castle because we were studying medieval times. And we made this whole like movie story thing surrounding it which was just so much fun. Thank goodness you're all right. We had this covered wagon that we all sat and rode in and I wrote this skit about these pioneers where they sat in bathtubs and ate spaghetti and then they told me that wasn't very realistic. Something that I learned through all these immersive projects we did was what it might have been like for somebody to experience that. We did a project to help us learn about the Titanic. We built basically the ship and everybody was picked characters. So like the rich ladies and the poor ladies and the captain and dogs and cats. I remember I was the waitress. So I was the cook and then we had Titanic Day where we reenacted the sinking of the Titanic and it was just like so dramatic. As the ship was going down, the two captains, I think they were Lucas and Thomas, they wanted to come onto the lifeboats with us even though they're supposed to go down with the ship. And they were like, no, you have to go down with the ship. And we're like, no, that's okay, you can come and be safe with all of us. And so we like gave them our life jackets and like pulled them onto the lifeboat. I remember walking through that and being really impressed. <laughs> There was a lot of writing. We started from the very beginning in like kindergarten writing stories. We would write our stories and then take them to an editor and then present a rough draft which was submitted for peer approval or teacher approval or somebody's approval. There was never a right or wrong way to do it. In first grade I cranked out tons of them and then by fifth grade it was like oh maybe I'll get to three but it, they were much longer stories. And then we would have a publishing party at the end of the year where you'd get flowers and read your stories to everybody. And then we had to read aloud the book we'd wrote. I remember that being one of my favorite projects. I know a lot of friends who have to write a very detailed outline before they start writing because they can't, the paper just won't come together otherwise, whereas I feel like I'm better at just building the paper. Well, I think one of the really unique things about the children's school is that they didn't give grades. When you're being graded, the purpose of doing an assignment feels like doing it for the grade, whereas at the children's school it felt like the purpose of doing it was to learn. We just go over things and say, like, this is what you need to work on, this was really good, and it's just a lot more constructive. I had a fairly easy time going into middle school because I always tried to look for deeper meaning and excellence and a sense of self in whatever I was working on. I'm against grades. I think they're a mediocre way of expressing performance. My college offers grades. I decline to look at them. Uh, 
but I'll let you in on a secret, I'm doing just fine. A child that goes through a children's school becomes more creative and more independent, but also more cooperative. Just the philosophy of encouraging students to choose to pursue something based on their own passion and then having learning come as kind of a byproduct of that. Passion. Taking children seriously. Fun and really accessible for everybody. Children's school is probably the last time that I woke up in the morning and I'm like, yes, it's a school day. Early childhood education is huge and the children's school does it really well. I'm studying piano performance. Majoring in economics and history. I am a theater and child studies double major with a minor in urban education. And I'm now a freshman at Reed College. Economics and history, um, and I plan to minor in political science and business. I'm a first year at Grinnell College. I'm studying mathematics right now and I'm considering a double major in physics. And I'm studying psychology as a major and studio art as a minor. 